Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FI23 earnings conference call of HDFC Asset Management Company Limited. From the management team, we have with us Mr. Navneet Manod, Mr. Nozad Sirwala, and Mr. Simil Kanuga. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Simil Kanuga, who will give us a brief following which we will proceed with the Q&A session. Thank you and over to you Mr. Kanuga. Thank you so much, John. Good evening and uh, we really appreciate uh, all of you taking time out for this call on Friday evening. Uh, the results for the quarter ended June 22 along with a brief business update is available on our website under the AMC shareholder tab and also on the exchanges. Uh, let me start off on the industry. So net flows for the industry continue to remain strong. I'm talking about the equity flows. During the quarter, industry saw net new flows add up to rupees 783 billion, lower than rupees 968 billion for quarter ended March 22, but materially higher as compared to 251 billion for the quarter ended June 21. What we did mention last quarter does hold for this quarter too. The equity info number includes index funds and index funds comprises of both equity as well as debt index funds. We do not have a data separately available for equity and debt index funds as yet. Inflows in debt index funds have seen material uptick and hence thus weigh data to an extent. Let us look at it from AUM perspective to get some idea. AUM of debt index funds stood at rupees 23 billion as of June 21 and that number now is 417 billion. So nearly a 400 billion increase. As this is pure fixed income, material part of growth is in form of inflows. Fixed income funds continue to see outflows. This quarter, industry lost rupees 1178 billion. The number for the previous quarter was rupees 1046 billion. It would make logical sense to add debt index fund numbers here. Actually, one should even add AUM or flows in debt ETF, which is currently merged in overall ETF number. Debt plus liquid ETFs now account for rupees 606 billion in terms of AUM. The corresponding number as of June 21 was rupees 399 billion. Liquid funds saw net new flows of rupees 133 billion for the quarter and others as a category which is basically ETF, arbitrage funds and fund of funds investing overseas saw inflows of rupees 216 billion. Individual investors continue to allocate to mutual funds and now the live folio count stands at 133.9 million with the overall unique number of investors at 35.3 million. SIP flows for the month of June was similar to that of March 22 at around rupees 123 billion. We closed the quarter at an overall AUM of rupees 3966 billion, market share of 11.1%. Excluding ETFs, our market share is 12.4% on closing AUM and 123 on quarterly average. If one looks at actively managed equity oriented AUM, our market share is more or less constant as compared to March 22. We continue to enjoy a favorable asset mix as compared to that of industry and also favorable ratio in terms of AUM from individual to non-individual investor. Our market share in B30 AUM is 11.4% and that makes us a distant number two. In terms of systematic transactions, we processed over 3.73 million transactions, totaling up to rupees 12.8 billion rupees in month of June 2022 as against rupees 12.3 billion in March of 2022. Before we move to financials, let me quickly update on what is happening in terms of new products and other businesses. There was a regulatory embargo at industry level on launch of any new mutual fund schemes for the quarter. We have approvals for nine ETFs, though few of them do need some kind of date extension. Uh, AMFI has clarified that earlier today. Assuming all approvals fall in place, we propose to launch all of these during the course of the quarter. We have few more ETFs and index funds which have been filed. We'll launch those as and when the approvals come by. In terms of sectoral and thematic funds, as mentioned during the previous quarter, we have four funds awaiting clearance and the same will be launched over time subject to those approvals coming by. We also filed for a fund that would track the MSCI Emerging Market Index. In terms of Category 2 AIF, we have filed PPM with SEBI in early June. A quick recap here, 
we are launching a fund of funds which would invest across the entire spectrum right from early stage vc funds to mid markets so growth funds to buyout funds in terms of our wholly owned subsidiary in gift we are progressing well and hope to go live over the next couple of quarters now we move to financials revenue from operations grew by 3% year on year and 1% on a quarter on quarter basis other income for the quarter is materially lower due to lower mtm gains in debt mutual funds on account of increase in interest rates as well as the mtm loss attributable to market volatility on mandatory equity mutual fund investments employee cost for the quarter was rupees 780 million versus rupees 835 million if you take the cost of esop which is a non cash expenditure employee cost for the current quarter stands at rupees 677 million as against rupees 659 million for the quarter ended june 21 other expenses have increased by 27% year on year basis first quarter of the last financial year was in times of lockdown or say reduced operations we would like to draw your attention to the expenses for the quarter ended june 2019 that was a normalized quarter pre covid it was rupees 406 million so over a period of 3 years the cost has gone up from rupees 406 million to rupees 525 million an absolute increase of 29% or a cagr of just about 9% profit after tax fell by 9% both year on year and quarter on quarter basis with lower other income being the key contributor uh before we open it up for questions i would just like to hand over the call to navneet uh, to make a couple of uh, comments so thanks and we'll uh, hear navneet and pose that we'll open it for questions hi good evening so first of all at the outset i want to place our sincere appreciation for contribution made by prashant over the last 19 years or so you must have heard about the announcement we made earlier today in reference to his resignation in 2003 when zurich financial services decided to move out of india prashant along with the scheme moved to hdfc mutual fund as everyone knows prashant has the distinction of being the longest serving fund manager in india i have known prashant for many years and i have the highest regards for him as a fund manager as well as cio the hdfc mc investment team is known to be amongst one of the best in the country i have now spent nearly a year and a half at hdfc mc and can vouch for the processes and depth that is second to none in fact this has got further verified when i hear the same from fund managers who have joined us in last couple of years from other amcs and also the analysts who have joined on the sell side talking about the fund management team uh, so on the equity side we have chirag with experience of over 20 years gopal agrawal over 18 years roshi jain over 20 years anand ladha over 18 years Rakesh Vyas over 20 years, Shrinivas Ramamurthy over 15 years, and I'm sure several of you would know most of these people well, and so all our other analysts. We have further beefed up our team by adding Rahul Bajan, uh, who just joined us from Sundaram Mutual Fund, again an experience of over 20 years across sell side and buy side. We have nine dedicated analysts uh, with experience ranging from six years to 20 plus years. Most of them have experience over a decade and are counted among the best in the sectors that they cover. The combined years of experience of our equity investment team, when I look at all of these people, would come to something like 230 to 240 years.
perspective, which you would know that has shrunk over the last couple of quarters. Uh, your third question on the capital allocation, I think we have always, that's something uh, that, that our board is cognizant and uh, we will continue to evaluate best possible options. Uh, if and when there is a right kind of an opportunity comes by, uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep exploring all those options. Uh, you would know that our dividend payout ratio for the last financial year was just a shade under 65%. And uh, I, I would like to believe that this should slope upward. Sure, sure. That's helpful. Thank you. And if one more I can squeeze on was on the yields. If we see uh, our yields by the no, Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your voice sure. is not coming very clear. Is it better now? Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Namely, for your answer. Uh, if I can squeeze one more question was on the yields. If we see, look at our overall yields, both on a sequential and, and bio wire basis, they seem to have improved. Uh, can you help us understand, you know, uh, what has led this improvement? Is it entirely driven by the improvement in the equity mix or, you know, uh, we were able to, uh, the, the pressure on the yield itself has eased out in the industry and for LGFTMC? No, no, I think uh, it's just basically a bit of uh, mix change and some bit of rounding up, but I don't think so. You should read much into this. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Surana from CLSA India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. My first question is then uh, last year during when we, when we were losing market share in equity, you had alluded that, you know, uh, broadly our market share in outflows were stable and uh, we were kind of losing market share in gross new inflows. So if you could just qualitatively update us on how, how the situation has changed on that front, because as I understand, Scheme's uh, performance has been quite uh, good over last one, one and a half years. So uh, if you could just update on that. And secondly, if you could just elaborate on uh, what are the benefits that we can see uh, that will accrue to HDFC AMC on account of uh, you know HDFC Bank and HDFC merger. Those are two questions. Sure. So equity market share for the quarter was more or less stable. Uh, I can tell you two things. Uh, one, that our market share in redemptions is falling, which definitely is good news. And on the other hand, our market share in gross flows is getting better by the day. We did lose out on a large number of SIP registrations that happened during the last couple of years, but we are catching up on that. Uh, we used to be a pioneer when it comes to the uh, SIP creation, and we are very hopeful over the next couple of quarters, couple of years, we would uh, look to regain that market share in SIPs. Uh, a related question would also be the linkages between performance and the share within outflows as well as inflows. Uh, I would say that improved performance and the resultant increase in market share, there is a bit of a time delay between those two things. My experience tells me that performance either way is good or bad, tends to be ignored for a couple of quarters. It then gets noticed, uh, but there is a belief that the phase is temporary. Investors and distributors will then start planning an action, but the real action would follow over the next couple of quarters. So it takes time for one to start seeing results of good performance or, or downside associated with difficult period of performance. Uh, so to repeat the point, I think we are seeing the market share is stabilizing and uh, fall in the market share in redemption and increase in the market share in gross flows. Sure, sir. The, uh, yeah. Merger, I mean, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, the impact on us due to the merger can be neutral to positive. I think we become part of a larger entity with a much uh, deep distribution network. Understood, sir. Thank, thank, thanks for your response. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Ladda from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening. Thank you for taking my question. Just uh, just harping on the yield question by among the earlier participants, there is a material uptick in the yield. Uh, and, and sort of, if I do a little bit of a back calculation, it seems to be coming from the equity side. Uh, you know, any sort of color comment on that would be uh, very helpful. 
the other thing that i notice in the numbers is that the other income has fallen uh, dramatically and so uh, has the tax amount and your tax rate has come off to about 18.4% now this probably suggests uh, you know a, a loss in the other income uh, a realized loss in the other income and you creating a deferred tax asset uh if you could elaborate whether my reading is right and uh, you know what is this loss pertaining to uh, that would be helpful yeah those are my two questions uh, madhukar on the yield side and i think tax one uh, nawzad will answer for you i think the yield side as i stated earlier it is nothing but a marginal mix in uh, marginal change in the mix and secondly uh, as i stated some bit of round up so what tends to happen is last quarter you would have seen it at at 48 it being at uh, 48.4 and if it goes to 49.6 it goes to 50 so some bit of rounding up and some bit of asset mix change so these two things have led to uh, led to an improved yield also if you want to really get into a microscope uh, you uh, there is there were zero nfos in this quarter so the so called uh, low cost flows into the into the aum were also lower so uh, low revenue i mean low revenue flow into the aum was was lower so these two things would have led to some bit of but as as i stated earlier don't really look into it uh, beyond the point i think the yields are uh, uh, are in line with what we mentioned in the previous quarter and uh, i i hope and, things uh, change for, for the upside but that's not the case and just to to add something over here uh, directionally do you continue with your earlier commentary of you know uh, further sort of decline in active equity yields absolutely i think see we have stated this even earlier right uh, if you uh, if you recall see what tends to happen is uh, if you look at our book somewhere at mid 70s versus that the flows are nowhere near that number so absolutely you are you are you are uh, right uh, there is going to be dilution in yield as more and more money comes in i think one thing that you need to kind of also consider the pace of dilution of yields see what happened last year when we started the year 2021 22 we started with an aum base of just about i'm talking about industry as a whole started with an aum base of 13 or trillion rupees and we saw inflows gross inflows adding up to close to 5.9 or 5.95 trillion rupees so there was a 45% of the aum in terms of gross flow now if you look at current numbers in terms of run rate currently the run rate is 50000 crores or 500 billion rupees uh, what was last year is this year now if you look at say another 5.9 trillion even flowing in it is on a denominator of nearly 18 or 19 trillion rupees so the pace of dilution of yield might slow down but uh, yes there would be dilution in yield as more and more money comes in got it thank you thanks thanks on the tax thing nazar you take yeah i'll take the question on so other income we also explained earlier uh, it is lower largely due to lower mtm gains on debt mutual funds and uh, mtm losses uh, on account of the equity mutual fund exposure tax the skin in the game circular on the effective tax rate for the period of end of june 22 it's lower due to reduction in deferred tax charge on account of mtm losses and also reversal of deferred tax liability on certain investments that were sold and set off against carried forward losses understood understood okay that, that's it from my side thanks thank you The next question is from the line of Priyesh Jain from Motila Law School. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh,
be more or less constant only at uh, somewhere in late 20s. Uh, whether they are low, so yes, I think it is lower than what it used to be because of uh, lower assets in the credit risk and some of the other higher yielding funds. Uh, having said that, on the other hand, we are seeing some bit of migration happening in favor of uh, debt index funds. So even if we think that uh, with the increased uh, YTM on the credit risk fund, we might get in more money there and thereby higher yields, some bit of that will get diluted uh, by flows into debt index funds. So net net, I think if you look at the debt side of our business, the yields uh, should be more or less constant the way, way we see it. Some, somewhere between 25 and 30 basis points is what we would uh, we understand it to be at. So that is uh, that is on the yield side. Uh, and my last question was on the uh, share of legacy assets in your current uh, mix. Um, but you know exact numbers, but you know, any 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 color there that would be helpful. Uh, Prash, we don't really comment on that, but the way we would like to kind of help you understand is on our legacy book, our yields are somewhere on the equity legacy book, I mean, our yields are somewhere in mid 70s. So, uh, and that is as of say 30th June. So you can say that the entire book that does exist on 30th of June is uh, giving us a yield of around uh, uh, somewhere in mid 70s. And, and the, uh, the new flows are obviously all over the place in sense that when we did our last NFO, the direct plan TR was somewhere in uh, 40s. So you are getting in yields as low as 40s, but uh, most of the flows that are happening in our, uh, in our regular, whatever, the existing funds, they are obviously at a yield better than 40, but nowhere near 75. Okay. And last question, you know, uh, what are the trends on commission payouts in the industry? Uh, uh, is there any competition, increased competition, or anything that you can, uh, any trends that you are witnessing currently? So I think price things are definitely getting bet better as compared to what it was, say, early part of uh, of last year. Uh, but uh, but yeah, competition is definitely intense uh, now. Again, this whole NFO uh, saga has started, so more number of new fund offers would put in some bit of an additional pressure. But like what we saw in the first half of last year, uh, we are not seeing anywhere uh, numbers anywhere as bad as those. So things are definitely better. Industry as a whole has kind of, I think, realized that uh, it makes sense to do business at a rational price. So yeah, it is better than where it was last year, uh, lower than where our historic, historic book is. All right, thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh from J.P. Morgan Chase. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I have just two questions. One is on this SIP and individual market share. So besides the performance, are there any specific uh, you know, initiatives you have lined up to kind of improve that? Uh, the second is, is there any early distributor feedback uh, on Mr. Prashant and you know, departing and do you think there will be an impact on uh, new flows into the AMC? And third is now with the new structuring, what will be the concentration of AUM, you know, uh, with the top two or three from this? Thank you, sir. The first one was what we are doing on SIP. Oh, the variety of things, as I mentioned that uh, SDFC AMC has been a pioneer when it comes to creating the cult around SIP. We were one of the first, we were among the early players to, to focus a lot on that. I think over the last several months, I think we have tried to regain that in terms of our engagement with the uh, distributors. Of course, as you mentioned, performance also helps. Uh, uh, as the performance has improved across the board, that is also helping us. And all the other initiatives, whether it comes to marketing, if you look at our social media handles and the other form of marketing that we have been doing, I think in terms of uh, and that the uh, improving our digital assets, improving our, our user experience on, on creating a new SIP or getting a new customer uh, on board. All of those things we have been working and uh, the results are very, very visible. As products also get approved, uh, as I think we mentioned earlier, that there is a bit of lag between the performance and the flows. And uh, particularly with the banks and the other national distributors, uh, where the products go out of their recommendation list or the focus list when they come back, there's a bit of a lag between when you start seeing those numbers, whether in SIP or in terms of the uh, lump sum flows. Uh, we have started seeing that positive impact as, as the products are getting approved or, or getting on the focus list or on the recommended list across uh, most of the banks and the national distributors. 
your other question was on will it imp the uh, prashant departure impact the flow uh, that is i mean the, <laughs> the announcement has happened today but as i mentioned earlier that uh, i think we have a very solid team one of the data point i can give you is that how i mean uh, if you look at all our actively managed funds and now we have uh, different fund managers so who have been managing uh, funds with different styles. So when I talked about Roshi or Gopal or Srinivas or, or Chirag or uh, uh, now Rahul will be managing, most of our existing products have been getting money, positive flows. So money has been coming into almost 90% of our actively managed funds. I mean the positive flows are there in almost 90% of our, our, our actively managed funds. So uh, I think we remain confident that uh, distributors would continue to support us. And Saurabh, sort of obviously uh, the concentration of AUM will go down. So if you look at Prashant manages somewhere around 43, 44% of our AUM, and uh, we are yet to kind of make a, a formal announcement on which schemes will be managed by which manager, but it will be split between one, two or three managers depending on what, uh, what we finally decide. So, so yeah, concentration of AUM would go down as compared to where it was. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question from the line of Dipanjan Ghosh from City. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, just two questions from my side. One is um, you mentioned on the OPEX number and compared it with pre pandemic levels. Just wanted to get some sense on uh, directions regarding to the overall movement in your operating expenses. The second is, you know, if I, uh, on the distribution side, uh, if I look at two things, one is, uh, you know, if I look at the disclosure on commissions and, uh, you know, just try to get some sense of where the commission uh, kind of inched up uh, during FI22, it seems that the distributors or the larger ones who have been contributing bulk of the flows for the industry and also for you to some extent, there the commissions increase was a little bit higher. And also to some extent, if I see the gross flow number, the overall gross flows from the top 10 distributors are significantly high in FI22. So just wanted to get some sense uh, on these two things um, out here. So on the cost, uh, you know, as you discussed, uh, the increase in other expenses is largely attributable to business promotion, technology spend, and, you know, life coming back to normal. So we'll have the distributor trainings, we have travel, etc. cetera. Uh, we mentioned on the call earlier, so the, over the three years, you know, June 2019 quarter, we spent about 40 crores of expenses, and the current quarter is 52 crores, uh, and that's a sort of CAGR of 9%. Uh, having said that, we are, of course, always mindful of what we spend, and at the same time, we don't want to be shy of from investing in the business. So the digital world is changing. We have to sort of spend on technology. Uh, data security is a matter, and IT infrastructure is, again, something that we going to spend money on. So I think we will obviously be mindful of where we, we are going to spend money. We are HDFC, but uh, cost in, in some form and shape will sort of uh, be there for us, and, and that, that's a trend we expect. Ashya, on the, on the second part. So I think uh, you just mentioned about uh, higher distribution commissions being paid to the larger guys and, and they being larger contributors to cross flows. Uh, so yes, there has been some level of concentration in terms of larger brokers. Uh, in terms of commissions, I think the commissions across the board have been high, but as we have always maintained, right, if you look at it from our three broad distribution channels perspective, uh, banking, national distributors, and, and MFDs, question sir uh, first question on the dividend payout uh, at what point you think you can increase the payout to say closer to 95 to 100 percent considering we have uh, around 5000 or crore of net worth now so i mentioned that uh, last year i mean last two years you would have seen an upward trajectory uh, as far as the payout ratio is concerned and uh, my sense is that this will have an 
upward trajectory going forward as well i mean the slope should should move upward okay okay but is there anything that you are looking at in the sense of some kind of level of uh, cash and cash equivalent cool or net worth that that you think uh, after that you will be comfortable increasing it to uh, higher levels so as i mentioned earlier i mean the board is cognizant of that and will continue to evaluate best possible options uh, i mean from the cash requirement perspective we need to keep set some cash aside for abiding by save the skin in the game need to see the rias it will help us make a strong business case uh, we also have to put in some capital into funds we'll set up in gift but otherwise as i mentioned earlier that uh, payout ratio should have an upward trajectory okay got it uh, second question is on uh, distributor side so a uh, post a tr cut uh, since we passed on most of the tr cut to the distributors a lot of them sort of uh, we are not keen doing the business uh, so that is the feedback that we got from the from the distributor community uh, so are they coming back to us now so uh, is it is it possible to get some kind of a quality statement uh, how has been the engagement with them so across the board we are seeing positive traction whether it's the banks whether it's national distributors whether it's the uh, mutual fund distributors i think in terms of our overall engagement and activity with them has gone up substantially and we are seeing the results so i we 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 feel very positive about the traction across all channels okay okay and just last question so you made one comment that last two years we couldn't do much of a see price station so were there any specific reasons uh... no that was uh, amar that was because of like overall our traction was pretty pretty okay. small because of slightly okay. muted performance and and stuff like that okay okay got it got it yeah that's it from my end and best of luck for the rest of the time Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lalit Theo from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I just wanted to understand, sir, despite the market volatility, the SIP flows in the industry have remained strong and at all and and at a all time high. And for us also, it has improved during the quarter. But at the same time, we are we also understand that the net is net SIP inflows are about like forty to fifty percent in the industry level. so uh, so how has that been how is that trend for us been for us and and recently we have seen that there is a slowdown in the SI, new sip registrations also so are we seeing any slowdown in the registrations as well yeah i think this net sip is a bit of a means we have read the, these reports right because but finally what is sip sip is the inflows that is coming in the number that we are presenting for our asset management company is based on cash flow basis so if we are saying that we are getting 12.8 billion rupees we are getting that much amount of money in the account these are not registrations these are actually based on the cash flows and what we are reporting is the systematic transactions in total uh, so that is one part of it in the second part of the question is on the overall whether the uh, market volatility would impact the flows uh, you know it's interesting when i look at the daily transaction sheet i tend to see increased number of transactions especially on the day the market corrects sharply and it is pretty interesting which means that investors are actually trying to buy more when markets correct and i'm talking about the number of transactions at our end uh, of course if the returns over say a year or two do not look attractive there would be uh, some amount of inertia there would be an impact on on the flows but I, i must give this credit to the you talked about like sip flows remaining robust and i must give the uh, should give the credit to the entire ecosystem which is regulators uh, industry uh, distribution fraternity media the association of mutual funds for getting the message of long term investing across and uh, i think wallet is now being taken in stride and the best example of that is like growth in the sip flows over over medium to long term Also, I think sure. just if I may add there, right? See, SIP itself is a growth, right? So we are talking about growth on growth. So this uh, whatever twelve or thousand crores is actually additional money coming into the mutual fund industry. So it's a step function. We have seen like a rapid growth. If it stabilizes for some time, that would not really concern us beyond a point. Sure, sir. And so, like a uh, data keeping question. So, like in the quarter, like the employee expenses, if we see. Excluding the ESOP expenses, so that has grown uh, sequentially 13%. So, any specific reason for the same? 
so i think one is of course uh, we had our uh, appraisals uh, which are sort of flown through also i think you must see it in context of the fact that uh, you know over the last three years the expense has only grown by 6% per annum uh, so there is nothing uh, sort of out there about it it's, it's just normal increase in uh, year end compensation and if i can add what uh, navzar just mentioned market size strong and it is important for us to retain our talent our industry is clearly experiencing a strong growth we are extremely excited about the prospects of our business and there is no reason for us to not invest in our people sure sir thank you sir thank you next question is from the line of nidesh from investec please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity sir it's a couple of questions first is uh, uh from a 3 to 5 year perspective uh, how do you see this uh, industry evolving uh, and how are we placed with uh, with, uh, with those trends because there are multiple things which are happening one is uh, uh, the share of uh, passive is gradually increasing uh, i don't know about the recent trends but uh, the last year it was a gradual pick up in passive i think those trends may accelerate uh, over next 5 years uh, and uh, there is pressure on our fees Uh, uh and probably the direct uh, 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 role of direct uh, uh, money coming directly to the emcs may also increase over a period of time uh, there has been quite sharp adoption in the last 5 years so in this context how are we placed and how are we uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to benefit from these trends so how i think about our industry for next 3 5 years so purely from a growth perspective think about it we are a 3 trillion dollar economy and one of the fastest growing economy in the world so even today the household savings i mean if you take let's say ballpark number of around 20% we're talking about 600 billion dollars of of savings and if you look at the percentage which is coming into the mutual funds and within that into equity i think it's way small so a long way to go other way to look at it i mean if you look at overall household assets today of 9 10 trillion dollars half of that would be in real estate uh, 10 to 15% or so would be in coal a lot of that would actually be in hard cash and the overall equity assets within that is little over 4% in fact that number was like half 10 years back it's, it's grown but still abysmally low relative to any other country in the world whether you look at equity assets as percentage of uh, market cap i mean equity assets with mutual fund as percentage of market cap as percentage of gdp as percentage of household savings as per, i mean it flows or uh, as percentage of overall assets i think a long way to go uh, you look at uh, i mean uh, 50 crore people who would have uh, a pen card within that maybe 7 or 8 crore people who file income tax returns versus the people who have invested in mutual funds if you look at unique accounts are like less than 3 and 1/2 crores so long way to go and uh, at lbfc mc we have set a mission for ourselves which is to be the wealth creator for every indian to be the wealth creator for every indian we believe this 3 3 and 1/2 crore number can go up substantially over the next several years as the acceptance of a mutual fund as the uh, preferred saving vehicle investment vehicle and uh, within that i think more and more people accepting sip as the way to to create wealth over a period of time gains acceptance and we want to lead from the front uh i hope that answers your question and there would be several other opportunities right that's on the core mutual fund side uh within that there are opportunities uh in and and uh, other than that i mean there are opportunities in managing money for family offices the trichanais or the other institutional investors on segregated accounts which is like pms we are also looking at uh, aif uh building the platform on the on the alternative investment fund side and we see a lot of opportunity there as as india grows over the next several years from 3 to 5 trillion dollar economy we all talk about uh, financialization of savings we talk about uh, digitalization of finance but even financialization of assets is also a very very big trend and there will be opportunity on the alternative side uh, even i think serving large global institutions uh who would have interest in investing in india uh in equity market and bond market and alternatives over the next several years there would be another opportunity so over the next 3 5 7 10 years we feel very excited about the opportunity an indian asset manager with a pedigree like us can have 
it's short sure. so i was actually asking from a uh, from these trends of asset going up a uh, share of direct pay and going up uh, from both trends so uh, the growth story of indian mutual fund industry is i think uh, very well appreciated but uh, looking at uh, the current concerns that most of the investors have is uh, uh, how the revenue pool of this industry will grow aum i understand will grow at a pretty, pretty rapid pace but how the revenue pool will grow and uh, there are concern around disruption from let's say passive from direct mutual fund also we are seeing that our our, our own uh, fee yields have been coming down as we mentioned that uh the lowest in the is around 40 basis point and book yield is 75 basis point uh, so uh, in that context uh, how are we placed uh, with respect to the revenue pool or profit uh, pool growth for the industry and for ourselves so i can give the analogy of the uh, broking industry i mean look at the way commissions have fallen over the years few years back people were extremely concerned about uh you know that the fall in commission rates there they would have fallen by like what 90% or so uh but look at the the revenue pool and the and the profit pool in the last couple of years so i think something similar uh, may happen here and as i mentioned that uh, as a company we believe there is huge opportunity in front of us and uh, we wouldn't like to miss on that opportunity so sure, sure. and second is of uh, what we have seen is that there is a very high correlation of inflows uh, with uh, last 12 month performance last uh, uh, 18 month performance and because of which actually the investor end up chasing the best performing fund during that period that might not necessarily be the best strategy uh, they keep uh, and uh, because of which uh, uh, i think investor also loses out uh, companies also uh, amc also loses out so is is there a, 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 a is there a way to correct that uh, to create more awareness among, among the invest among the investor community or uh, how do we think about that so to an extent it's happening which is reflecting in the uh, in the stable flows into sips and uh, you are right i mean of course uh, the short term performance does impact but i think uh, people appreciate uh when institutions like us have a long term track record the pedigree the process the investment philosophy all of that i think a uh, lot of investors and distributors appreciate that aspect and 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 we will as an industry as an institution will continue to work harder at that sure sir thank you so much for coming thank you next question is from the line of atul mehra from motila loss of asset management please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening and uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, so just uh, one question with respect to uh, the fund of fund uh, give city that we spoke about so just uh, uh, just thinking about it uh, conceptually like uh, for us like uh, we have primarily been a more uh, retail oriented uh, in terms of uh, asset management offering um, and uh, we don't have our own distribution like most of it is relied on Uh, through banks or IFAs or uh, wealth managers. So, for a fund of fund offering, uh, wouldn't you see that uh, a wealth manager uh, carry out uh, a fund of fund offering by themselves, or uh, the H and I client through the LRS would uh, just go out and buy passes on any of these platforms like a Vested or something? So, uh, so how do we see uh, in terms of earnings for us here? Because it's a more H and I oriented product and. Uh, it is also something that the H and I and the wealth manager can do themselves. So uh, maybe if you could uh, talk a little bit about this, thank you so much. I know the market is very small today, and I think over the next several years, as the amount of wealth increases, people diversify more. People look at various opportunities across the world, across asset classes, across different markets. uh so we will create products which will invest internationally uh in give city the idea here is to attract the lrs capital as well as capital from nrs but the the broader other idea on the since you asked about the give city so the wholly owned subsidiary we have created in give city will be our gateway to the global world we will create products in gift which would uh, help us showcase our domestic investment management capabilities to global investors and we see a lot of opportunity in this space over the next several years right so it's more from uh, both from an inbound perspective as well as outbound so inbound is also an angle uh, here when you set up it right absolutely inbound is a larger angle <laughs> got it got it got it uh sure sir thank you so much all the best thank you 
Thank you. Next question is from the line of Hiral Desai from Manvid Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Hi, Navneet. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, Hiral. Yeah. So, uh, Navneet just wanted to check of this uh, five and a half thousand crore of investment uh, book that we have, how much of that is blocked because of regulatory reasons? And on the remaining uh, part, can you actively manage it? Like, you know, take a call on the rate cycle, et cetera? No, a very large part of that is invested into our own income funds. So uh, we don't take aggressive calls on interest rates or duration or any such thing. So on, on, and on the question Because on, of regulatory reasons or uh, because of the call that uh, you guys have taken? That's a, I mean, that, that's the uh, call we have taken. Over a period of time, you will see the invest. We will have to seed our, our uh, AI products. Uh, as we have mentioned earlier, we are launching a fund of fund in category two. Over a period of time, we'll look at more funds in the AI category and we'll have a skill in the game and then we'll be investing there. Okay. Otherwise, on the uh, fund side, I mean, from a TV regulation perspective, I think there is a skin in the game which like a certain percentage of our AUM across equity and fixed income funds that get invested. And so that number uh, is 388 crores is what we have to invest as per the steady circular. 258 crores of that is in equity and balance okay. 130 okay. is in debt. It's anyway, uh, it's part of the disclosure on the website, it's part of the steady mandate disclosure on all the MCs website. Okay, okay. And let me just conceptually to understand, so let's say you launched an NFO last year where, you know, obviously the pricing was very stiff. Uh, now, you know, currently uh, we don't really have an upfront uh, payout, so it would be based in, you know, in form of trail. So is there like a lock-in period? So let's say if you've uh, launched an NFO, you can change the dealer payout only after a year or you can change it, uh, let's say, you know, within that year also. Like, how does that uh, that nuance work? So, so Hiral, basically what we do is when we go and do a new product, we tend to commit commissions for a period of time. So it's not something that is changing every year. So we would have like, uh, and it's different uh, commission levels for different set of distributors. So there would be certain places where we would have committed for three years, certain places committed for a year, so on and so forth. So, but yeah, obviously we can't go and just keep... Uh, changing the numbers there. Most of the distributors do expect us to, uh, to give them three years kind of uh, committed trail commissions. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Thanks a ton, yeah. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit from Kodak Mandra Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so you, you made a comment that the market share uh, on the active equities is broadly flat for the last few months. Uh, but, but given your earlier comment that uh, there's been some improvement on the on the redemption and the gross flows, one would have thought that uh, you would have seen some improvement on the market share as well because the construct of the AUM for us is probably a little more on the balanced side of things, right? Is there something that you're missing in this overall math here? No, so not exactly. See, what we said is the gross flows have improved from where they were uh, and redemptions have gone down. Uh, but uh, see, for example, our market share is 11 and a half. So for new flows, net new flows, our market share has to be above 11 and a half for the share to, uh, share to improve, right? So uh, what we are just stating, if you look at the previous few quarters, we were kind of losing share quarter on quarter. That is not what has happened in the, the most recent quarter. Okay, understood. Got it. That's that's the only question I had. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Siddharth, individual investor. Please go ahead. Siddharth, may I request you to unmute your line from your side and go ahead with the question, please? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Now you are. Okay. Um, could you detail a little bit more about the AIF and the venture capital fund that you've launched, about the investments that you've made and what you are looking at investing in through these? Uh, sure, sir. So basically, we are yet to launch it. We have filed for uh, filed, filed a PPM with uh, SEBI. Uh, this is going to be a fund of funds, which is going to invest in the entire spectrum. 
uh, more or less half of the fund would be invested into venture capital funds and the balance half would be invested into mid market so growth funds uh, some bit of it might also go get into buyout funds so uh, we are awaiting uh, approval for this product from sebi and once that that happens we get into a capital raise mode post we raise the capital will start committing capital to underlying set of funds we have started the process in terms of meeting up with the underlying set of managers uh have started the screening process and uh, and we are just trying to get a hdfc institutional overlay on this whole whole uh, fund okay thank you thank you As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Namneet Manoj for closing comments. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. On behalf of HDFC Asset Management Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.